Yo, what's going on everybody? It is Straight Outta Boston here, aka King of Boston. Today we're back for episode 6 of my Montreal Expos 2004 playthrough here in Out of the Park Baseball 15. And today we're at the midseason of 2006. And we are off to a fantastic start to the season, 52-38. and 38. And uh, the All-Star teams were just announced. We'll take a look at those. Um, I'm sure we'll be pretty well presented. We've had a lot of good individual performances. But let's check it out for ourselves. Um, so it doesn't look like anyone from our starting rotation made it. Jonathan Broxton does make it, though. He has had a pretty good year out of the bullpen for us. 27 saves. Ooh, Mike Napoli down there. AJ Pruszynski. Um, There's Miguel Cabrera for us. He's slashing. 317, 392, 561, 19 homers. And it looks like that's it, actually, for our All-Stars. I thought it would be a little bit better represented, to be honest. We can take a look at how some of the guys have done. Our rotation uh, probably does not deserve any... <laughs> any uh all-stars we have not had a great not had a great performance from our starting five um scott feldman's been really horrible i'm gonna have to look to replace him probably um i'm, I'm sort of waiting i don't know why why did this happen put him back as closer i'm sort of waiting for george jens to get ready and he is like close to ready but he came up i mean he's just been he's been horrible in triple a he's horrible in the bigs last year he's, he's just like never performed very well and his ratings aren't that impressive, so I mean, I don't know, we'll see. I'm a little uh, torn on George Jens right now, what he's going to do for us. Um, anyway, back to the pitching. See, our whole rotation has not been great. Garza has been pretty good for what I thought. I mean, you know, rookie like that coming in year after he's drafted, didn't think he was going to be as good. Urban Santana is definitely disappointing. Like, you look at those ratings and you just think, like, man, he could be in his stamina, he could be a lot better than this. Pryor's been good. That's probably what we expect out of Mark Pryor at this point, but Beckett's been a disappointment. It's not like he changed leagues or divisions or anything, but is uh, he's just not doing as well as he did last year. Just too bad, but we'll see if he turns it around. Uh, lineup, we can take a look at how some of the guys in our lineup have done. Let's do batting stats one. We'll start by OPS. Oh, that's still looking at pitchers, batters. All right, so Miguel Caber and Milton Bradley leading the way. No surprise there. Milton Bradley was on a torrid pace. He was on pace for over six and a half war and 41 home runs before he suffered a high ankle sprain and missed a month. Um, but he was, I mean, he has been incredible this year. So really glad of uh, what we've gotten out of him. And Miguel Cabrera has pretty much been Miguel Cabrera. I mean, you know, it's what you're going to get out of a guy like that. He has been uh, pretty fantastic. Uh, Manny Ramirez has been pretty good for us. He was actually asking for a contract extension. I would love to extend him. I mean, he's been great at the plate, but he's looking for a lot of money. He's 34, so, I mean, we could extend him. Like, I wouldn't mind giving him a couple extra years. I think a lot of his, I don't know, ability is going to carry over. It stinks because this is, like, the exact same ratings that Jose Bautista had. <laughs> um, Alfredo De La Garza has been really good. He's hitting 330. He's got a 409 OBP. Feels very um, Antonio Luna-ish if you guys saw the very end of the Houston Astros series. Remember a character by the name of Antonio Luna? And I've played a couple years past where I stopped recording, so I'm not sure if you guys remember how good he turned out to be, but he often slashed lines like this. He, he had like a really high contact rating and would end up usually winning batting titles and because of that having OBPs in like the 400s. And Delagarza sort of feels that way. He's a middle infielder, second baseman, so... We'll see. I'd love it if he turned into that. Khalil Green's been pretty good, hitting 15 home runs. James Loney's been really good. He won Rookie of the Month at one point. He's come down a little bit, but he's still um, 831 OPS. So, liking that a lot. James Johnson filled in for Bradley, and he was actually pretty good in the 39 games he started. Um, you can see 776 OPS. That's pretty good off the bench. Bob Chavez has been okay. In fact, I'm wondering if we should even consider starting Johnson over Chavez. I don't know. Um, and yeah, other than that, we might try Johnson over Chavez here. Mm, not really sure if Johnson's going to keep it up. We'll see what happens. We'll give it a go. Johnson over. I want to see how it, what what happens for like two weeks, and just see where Johnson's numbers end up. In fact, I'll probably check it when we cut back, because I'm going to cut out and then get uh, cut back in before we get closer to the trade deadline. Okay, so I'm a couple days ahead of where I wanted to cut back in, but we do have some pretty big news. Mark Pryor out for 11 months with a torn UCL. That is Tommy John surgery, and that is too bad. He was really, uh, he, was, he was definitely our best pitcher this year. 
and that stinks. And now he's going to miss part of next year as well. So we definitely need to replace him because um, we're in first place in our division. We're we're looking like we're going to make a run towards the playoffs. Um, so we do need to replace him um, now temporarily. We're going to put George Jens in there. But I'm also thinking, I'm not sure if we're going to survive with Jens and Feldman in our rotation. Um, so let's skip ahead a couple days. We'll actually get through Jens' first start, maybe. See how he does. And we'll also reevaluate the uh, James Johnson thing. I don't like how the rotation works in this game. It goes all over the place. Come on, let Jens pitch. All right, and then it'll be the 29th. All right, and he actually got a win. How did he do? Eight innings, one run. Nice. Okay, so we're a couple days later of the trade deadline, 59 and 45. Ooh, Jose Vidro is available. Um, let's look at the standings, and then we'll take a look at the team and see what I think I want to go after. So we're two games out of the Mets, four out of the Marlins. Um, if you go to the wild card, the Mets are first in the wild card. Okay. So we're four games ahead of being out of the playoffs. We're in a pretty good spot. Um, now, obviously, this is pre-second wild card, so winning the division or winning the wild card, not a huge difference between the two outside of just seeding and things like home field advantage, but it's definitely something we can get away with. So I'm not too, earned, too I'm not like keen on winning the division. I mean, making the playoffs at all I think would be great. Um so things I think we need, I think we should at least look at options for other starters. And then um, we definitely need a left-handed arm in our bullpen. It's something we have not had for a couple years. And uh, it is something that I definitely think we need. But I think our lineup's all right. Um, I suppose right field could be cause for concern. If we could get someone, I mean, I think Johnson's regressed enough. We should just put Chavez back out there. Uh, I don't think Wilson Rosado is going to be coming up at any point this year. He, his stock was down in AAA earlier. Yeah. And you see he's not performing very well and his ratings aren't nearly ready. So we are uh, probably not going to get any help from our system this year. Um, yeah, Ryan Church isn't going to. Okay. So it is, I mean, we can go to free agents. See who's still out there. So it's a good option first. I know we didn't have the money to sign Manny, but we still have budget room. I mean, maybe there's someone looking for a for a minor league contract. There's Sammy Sosa, home run power. Look at that. Um, let's look at relievers. Go back, go back, go back. Christian Guzman. Relievers. Actually, we're probably gonna just on all pitchers. Um, doesn't look like there are any good relievers left. Let's just do starters. No, nah, there's no one really left. Okay, so it's going to have to be via trade. Um, so I guess I'll just look at who's available and see uh, see what we can do. All right, so here's one deal we found. I'm finding it really hard to actually um, find guys who don't cost, like, top prospects. It's really stupid weird, but we're going to get Eric Milton, who is kind of trash, um, but... He gives us an extra arm. He's left-handed. We can either put him in the rotation or put him in the bullpen. If we put him in the rotation, maybe we could put Jens in the bullpen. This guy's not going to cost us anything, so it's kind of a no-brainer. Um, and I'm going to keep looking. I mean, uh, same thing. I want you know more lefties if we can. Um, and you know, even if it's in the form of a starter, I'd like to put Jens in the bullpen. Or I, 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 I shouldn't say I'd like to, but I should say I would if it uh, came to that. So anyway, we'll see. All right, so here's the other deal we're going to make. I'm not 100% sure if we're going to do it for these players, but we are going to get Andy Pettit, who's making $3.35 million. The only question is just trying to fit him under uh, under all of our money, all the money situations and stuff like that. Um, I guess we could still look for, like, a power left-handed arm, but Pettit is another one of these guys that's not going to cost anything. The only question is making the buddy work. Excuse me, was I... Uh, <laughs> I had to sniffle or whatever you want to call it. Um, okay, just, I just gotta make sure them, because, like, I don't really want to give up Damian Lara. I could give up Claudio Vargas instead, if I didn't want to give up Ralph Bean. Where is, 
this gets a little tougher. I think we can do two of these guys, though. Like, not Ryan Church, but maybe Alex Cunningham. And then Pasushi, Majewski, Damian Lahr, Eric Milton. Give up Pasushi, Chichi, whatever his name is. Um, and, yeah, I'm fine with giving up the rest of these guys. All right, and we'll pick up Andy Pettit. And, yeah, that puts us right up against the uh, our budgetary line or whatever, but that is all right. And then I guess the only thing I'm still looking for is, I I mean, yeah, sort of a proven guy who's done it before out of the bullpen, like, you know, that sort of mold. I'm, wow, Joel Zemaya, 21 years old. Beast. Um, Cubs. I mean, I guess Jens could be that. He's not proven, but, I mean, he's sort of that power arm type. Ricardo Rincon. Maybe we could try to get Ricardo Rincon. I don't think he would cost anything. Sean Hill. I could probably give up Sean Hill. Yeah. Sean Hill for Ricardo Rincon. Um, let's just go to our prospects. What about... I don't know. Garbage form instead. Okay, we gotta give up a major league contract again, right? Okay, so... Let's do, I like Norris and Johnson, because you can do Lara, and any one of these guys, okay. Okay, um, Valas, or, probably going to go for one of the older guys here, probably Valas, he's 26, and then we got to have a major league contract here. Hill, Lara, Majewski, Church. All right, we'll do Damian Lara. He's our backup catcher, but he's not any good, so <laughs> why not? All right, and we're going to get Ricardo Rincon. Cool. So now we just got to figure out where all these guys are going to pitch. How much space do we have on the roster right now? All right, so we're going to send down one guy. It's probably going to be Sean Hill because he's not been any good. Yeah, we'll send him down. And we're also going to need to... So we're going to throw all these guys in our active rosters. Gives us three lefties. Um, none of whom are spectacular, but hopefully one or two of them gets the job done. And we also need to get a backup catcher, a new one. So Robles or Mata. Um, I think we'll go with Antonio Robles. All right, and so for the lineups, we're just going to slot Robles in as the backup each time. Bench, we only have three bench guys, I think. No, we have four. It's the other one. I guess we only have three bench guys. Really? We must have. Oh, we do have more pitching than usual. Okay, so maybe a couple of these guys might get sent down. Um, so we're in Cone, we definitely want here. Middle relief. Yeah, we have two extra. We have, okay. So, we could send Feldman down. He is only 23. Yeah, I say we send Feldman down. He's not going to be thrilled about that, but we can put Pettit in the rotation. He still has the stamina to do it. And then Milton, who was not good in the rotation this year. I think we will put... I guess we'll put him in the bullpen. Can I see his splits? I can Oh, it's not gonna tell me what he's like versus. Let them. I can look at his real stats. Oh, that's kind of cool. Um, let me go to pitching stats versus lefties and versus righties. Okay, so usually he is better against lefties. This year, not so much. Um. Okay, so I guess we'll just leave him into the bullpen for now. Um, he can be long reliever, can be used as a left-handed arm. Um, I'm going to make Rincon secondary role lefty specialist. All right, and then we have... So I'm fine with carrying the extra bullpen arm. We still have one open roster spot then which we will give to a batter of some sort, maybe Ryan Church, sure, why not? 
because we did deal away Ron Calloway. So, all right, Church, and we put Robles there. We'll put Ryan Church. Church can actually play first base too, which we have, we need. So, we'll do that. And this is against righty, so maybe Church should actually be the backup over Johnson. And then Church here, and we'll actually f put him ahead of Johnson. Then I think we're past an early play, so I'm not going to worry about DH lineups, but we'll just copy and paste for now. And then swap these two so that Johnson gets in there against lefties if there is a need. Oops. There we go. It's always a trick to some of these things. All right, and that I think is going to be the team, and I don't think there's really much else to do. So I think we might call this an episode. Um, I imagine it's been a little shorter than usual, but I think I said that last time. And it was like 28 minutes or so, and I've posted a couple 40... Five minute ones recently, which take forever to render. So, hopefully, you guys won't mind. Um, let's simulate ahead. One more day. Take a look. Take one final look at our roster. Ooh, Michael Barrett's getting hot. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. I guess you could say the right field is still uh, a bit open or a bit unclear. But we'll see. It's not something that worries me dearly. Oh wow, wait, we should uh, we should fix our lineup here. Del Garza definitely should be batting. Probably here, Green. Yeah, he's 332 OBP. In fact, that's perfect right there. Yeah, Green seventh. I like that. Okay, should have done that a while ago. And then yeah, right field. I mean, I don't really think there's. Maybe we can sign Phil Nevin. I don't know. I don't think he's still around, but yeah, we'll just leave it be. I think Chavez can step it up. I got hopes for the kid. And he plays a very good defensive left field, so at the very least we're getting that. Alright, and we'll simulate ahead, and this will make it official. Personal message. Check the waiver wire as well. Whoa, five hit blitz by Shea Hillenbrand. Jeremy Bonderman, big month for the rookie. Adam Lind. So Adam Lynn playing person once, and I have a fond memory of him. I'm not going to share that memory, though. This is not the right time. Um, let's go to the waiver wire, see if anyone's getting waived. Yep, always. Dana Evelyn. I know this is Dave Bergen. Uh, Dana Evelyn, though. He's only 22. I would like to put a claim in on him. Uh, okay, well, can I trade for him? If Dana Evelyn's available. Um, what do you want? Where, where is he? Would he be under players DFA'd? Yeah, he would be. Okay. Oh, uh, what the hell? Wait, let's just initiate trade again because I don't want this to be screwed up. Okay. I don't know why we can't do it then. Maybe I'll check back later at the waiver wire. That's the guy I want to. I don't think I can put a claim in for this guy either. Nope. All right, Miguel Cairo, Doug Mirabelli, Tom Glavin. Look at that. That's kind of sad. He's been a starter for a couple of years. I wonder if he got 300 wins in this. I don't think he did because I don't think he got 300 wins till uh, oops, just like major league level until like oh five or oh six, and it doesn't look like he's been doing very well. Um, it's not gonna tell me his total. I don't think that adds up to 300 though. Oh, 258. Wow, that's too bad. All right, um, that is going to do it, David Ortiz. Ooh, on the Astros. Jesus. Come on, Red Sox, what are you doing? All right, so thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoy. Hopefully next episode we'll have a uh, postseason video. <laughs> That'd be nice. But uh, until then, it's going to do it. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy, and I'm out. Peace.